Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 8 of our human resource management course. Today we are going to dive into the critical realm of employee relations and engagement. Imagine a workplace where individuals feel valued and motivated and also connected. A workplace where positive relationships flourish. So today we are going to talk about employment relations and engagement. and. Uh, the broad topics that we are going to cover today would be building positive employee relations, strategies for enhancing employee engagement and dealing with the employee grievances and conflicts. So basically prior to delving deeper into it, I think it is very important for us to understand the importance of positive employee relations. And when we talk about positive employee relations, first of all it is important to understand what is positive uh, employee relations. So positive employee relations involve creating a workplace culture where communication is open, where trust is built and the conflicts are addressed constructively. So in this session, we are going to broadly talk about the points that revolve around how to build positive employee relations. I will take you through some small caselets which will help you delve deeper into it and will provide you very insightful information about how can the organization thinks on, think on developing positive employee relations at the workplace. So why? The question which arises is why are the positive employee relations important? See, positive employee relations actually are the cornerstone on a, of any healthy work environment. So they go, on, go beyond the policies, it is about creating a culture where employees feel heard, they feel valued, they feel respected and they are also motivated at work. So let us start by understanding uh, why positive employees employee relations matter. So when employees feel a sense of belongingness towards the organization, they feel satisfied with what they are doing, they feel motivated at work, it definitely impacts them in multiple ways. Like for example, if the employee feels heard, valued, motivated, recognized and acknowledged for the work done, he would definitely be exhibiting sense of teamwork. Research has shown that it directly impacts their productivity, it impacts their teamwork, it also leads to organizational success. So we can say that the, there is a clear linkage between organizational commitment and the positive employee relations. So the organizations must try their level best to ensure that the positive employee relations are maintained in the organization. The endeavor should be to create a culture full of openness, confrontation, trust, autonomy, proactive learning in the organization, so that the organization is able to sustain in the long run and it is able to gain the organizational success. So now it is important for us to understand the various elements of positive employee relations. There are several aspects of it, we, have go we are going to touch upon three of them which actually are at the heart of any organization. Let us start with what open communication is. So when we talk about this open communication, this actually is a very, very important element of positive employee relationships. Open and transparent communication channels 
you know they foster trust and reduce misunderstanding so therefore though it seems to be very simple word yet it holds a lot of value inside because open communication is a gateway to success in an organization therefore the organizations must try to foster a culture of open communication now i'm going to give you some of the examples as to how the organization can think on making things happen and they can foster a culture of open communication let's talk about the first method that is regular team meetings it has been seen that if the organizations are continuously and on constant basis conducting the regular team meetings they are benefited out of it they may schedule weekly meetings they may schedule biweekly meetings they may give the opportunity for everyone to share updates challenges and also the successes so there are organizations which are primarily working on, on this idea of conducting the regular team meetings and they are encouraging the people to uh, you know share their success their ideas their challenges and also their viewpoints so this definitely uh, helps in developing a very uh, congenial kind of environment within the organization for example the strategy in this regard could be to create an agenda that allows time for open discussion and encourage team members to voice their opinions so people feel valued when people feel valued they feel like contributing to the organization also they feel that they are an important stakeholder to the organization because the organization also listens to them hears them and also provides them with ample ample opportunities to uh, you know come up with their views another thing which can be done in order to do is in order to do this can be open door policy so leaders can maintain open door policy we often see that there are many hurdles there are many uh, barriers between the leaders and the uh, employees so this kind of line needs to be blurred and in today's era people want to be heard people want them to be heard so leaders must encourage open door policies the big names all the organizations which uh, have a big name in the uh, in their respective domains they actually foster a culture of open door policy wherein they welcome employees to approach them with concerns or ideas at any point of time they are just interested in reducing or they are just interested in blurring the boundaries which exist between people and the leaders so when they have this culture of open door policy people feel more valued they feel more committed towards the organization and they do not hesitate in approaching the leaders at any point of time and you never know which particular suggestion by which employee really works well for the organization so actively communicate the availability of the open door policy and we have to ensure that the employees feel comfortable taking advantage of this kind of policy which they have in place then at times despite the fact that the organizations are fostering a culture of open door policy and maybe they are uh, encouraging the people to go for a lot of regular team meetings so on and so forth at times it's important for the organization to give them some platform wherein they can anonymously put their feedback because many times it happens that people do not feel like disclosing their identity when they are coming up with such kind of when when they are coming up with any kind of feedback so it's important in this case to come up with a platform for the employees wherein they can feel free to provide their anonymous feedback it may be in form of coming up with some kind of suggestion box or anonymous online platform platform for employees so that they can submit their feedback or maybe they can submit their uh uh they uh, they can submit their views and opinions uh, without the fear of reprisal now in this uh, context the strategy could be to regularly review and address the feedback received and the organization has to make sure that they are demonstrating that it is taken very very seriously and is being acted upon because merely taking the suggestions from people would not suffice you need to act on it so organizations have to make sure that they are acting on those um uh, feedback which they receive and they are working towards it as well 
Another aspect associated with the open communication can be employee surveys. So, this can be yet another method to gauge employee satisfaction, gather some thoughtful insights. track their progress, identifying the areas of improvement and to understand the employees well. So, one of the uh, method which can be implemented and put in place to foster a culture of open communication can be understanding their need by means of employee surveys. So, we may, we may try to uh, put in some deliberate efforts to understand the satisfaction level of people. Are the employees satisfied with the organization or not? Or uh, they are not satisfied with certain aspects of the organizations? Or maybe we can get very thoughtful insights on the uh, personalities of the individuals by means of it. We can get to know about the areas which need attention uh, by means of such kind of employee survey also. Then organizations may even have they may follow the practice of town hall meetings. So, these town hall meetings uh, where leaders provide updates on company goals, performance and address questions from employees can be hosted regularly, maybe quarterly or uh, some kind of mid checkpoints can also be put in place as a part of these town hall meetings. This will encourage the employees to submit questions in advance and uh, they may be allowed for live question during the meeting. So, such kind of strategy can also be followed. So, town hall meeting is yet another thing which is uh, taking, uh, which is gaining momentum these days and many organizations are of the view that such kind of town hall meetings should be put in place on regular basis. Then these days technology has intervened in nearly all spheres and therefore, it is important to make use of the digital communication platforms also. So, we may employ some kind of collaboration tools, we may use some kind of collaboration tools and communication platforms for real time discussions also. Then maybe to foster this kind of culture, we may come up with regular conflict resolution workshops for people to equip the employees and managers with skills to address the conflicts on regular basis in a more constructive way, in a more uh, you know open way. Then is about leadership communication training. So, providing leadership training that provides effective communication skills include active listening and empathy. So, leadership communication training can also be provided. We can go for some kind of cross cultural uh, or cross functional kind of collaborations in the organizations which will further you know smoothen the entire process of open communication within the organization. Now, uh, after this we may talk about an important aspect of feedback and improvement. So, in the uh, previous lectures also I have been talking about the essence of feedback. Employees need feedback, so that they get to understand the areas of improvement, so that they get to know about where do they need to work on, so that they, they get to know about the uh, areas that they are actually faltering in or you may say, uh, you may say that it is important for us to provide them with the you know good kind of feedback. So, organizations have to work on these mechanisms and uh, they have to really work towards ensuring that you know adequate amount of feedback is given to the individuals from time to time and uh, some kind of constructive feedback goes to them you know organizations are even using some kind of approach such as 360 degree feedback mechanism for their organizations then organizations are even going for uh, a very robust mechanism for feedback in terms of uh, regularly updating them about their performances and the areas that they are lacking in, coming up with a very uh, robust performance management system. 
So all these things can really help in making the organization create this positive employee relationships and they will be certainly benefited in multiple ways. So after this, uh, the team, you know, it might happen that the team lead initiates a discussion by encouraging each and every team member to share their experiences and challenges, right? And uh, the, for example, if you talk about any organization which is basically into technology, so it may, you know, uh, the people may be given some kind of openness in the organization to come up with their concerns about unclear projects which are leading to some kind of delays in the task they are performing etc. So constructive feedback is something which should be given to the uh, people and uh, they should be taken very seriously and those changes should also be put in place. Then there is a strong need to ensure that the continuous improvement is a must for the organization because continuous improvement may further lead to enhancing the productivity, enhancing the collaborations and also it helps in increasing the morale of employees. So, I think it is very important for us to understand the essence of feedback and such kind of uh, culture can really take the organization to the next level. After that we have uh, recognition. So when we talk about recognition, uh, recognition also has a very vital role to play because a demotivated employee can really wreak serious havoc in the organization and therefore it is important for us to understand what motivates people. It is also important for us to understand that people get credit for what they do in the organization. They are duly acknowledged for their performance at work. They are duly recognized for the kind of achievements they do or maybe the kind of uh, contributions they are making. So ap appreciating the people for the work done. and acknowledging the people for the work done is of paramount importance. For example, many organizations they have this practice of giving employee of the month award. This promotes healthy competition within the organization and it also makes a person feel valued and they are constantly on the outlook and they are constantly uh, working towards making sure that the organizational goals are achieved. So those employees who are highlighting an it's, uh, outstanding performance at work may be given some kind of award or star of the month award can be given. Then there can be something called as peer recognition program which may be towards allowing the employees to recognize their peers for the exceptional performance. So it is another way to keep people motivated. So this is again a very very interesting uh, phenomena, this is again a very interesting program in which the peers recognize their fellow peers. So this actually promotes the culture of altruism. This again fosters a culture of sportsmanship within the organization and create some kind of team spirit within the organization as well. So peer recognition program can also be one of the ways by means of which we can keep people at work. Another strategy that we can discuss here, we are about to discuss here is personalized thank you notes. So managers may write personalized thank you notes for the exceptional performance of the individuals. And we may definitely make use of some kind of uh, technological interventions also here. We may make use of some kind of tools, we can use uh, employee dashboards or uh, say the dashboards are there which are primarily meant for these purposes. You know these dashboards uh, help you in understanding who is performing what and what is their uh, level of performance at what point of time 
and we may even be able to track the progress of individuals on regular basis. And once we track the performance of individuals on regular basis, we can definitely get to know about the people who are performing really well. And those people may be provided with some kind of thank you note from the uh, by the employer or maybe the manager. And this will definitely add a very personalized touch to what the individuals do. Then we have public, public acknowledgement. So, when you are acknowledging people in front of so many people or their fellow peers at work, recognizing achievements during these kinds of meetings can definitely boost the morale of individuals to a large extent. Then recognize, uh, to recognize the efforts of people, to recognize their, uh, you know, to recognize their uh, efforts and acknowledge their efforts, recognition awards can be given and uh, ceremonies can be hosted for them to work towards it. Then another way towards it can be employee appreciation events. We may host some kind of appreciation events. The organization can think of hosting some kind of appreciation events for rewarding the performance of those people who are achieving good. And maybe different kinds of strategies can be uh, taken up. For example, flexible work arrangements can be um, taken up for those people who are identified as high performance, high performers or high performance workers. So, the idea is to create and cultivate a culture of high performance in the organization. So, high performance culture is something that needs to be given a way to. And we need to be very, very careful about the fact that the individuals are recognized for their uh, performance well uh, and to foster a culture of high performance within the organization such kind of things are very, very important. Because if the individuals feel valued then only they will be contributing their level best towards the success of the organization. Some kind of spot bonuses may be given to them, uh, you know we may even provide them with gift cards for outstanding contribution. This will again uh, help them. Many organizations these days even have uh, come up with the idea of wall of fame, wherein they create a digital wall of fame or maybe a physical wall of fame, which showcases the employees achievements. So, such kind of uh, things are being uh, put in place. We may have something called as leadership recognition programs uh, for recognizing the leaders who effectively support and develop the teams. So, not only we are valuing the employees of the organizations who are uh, working efficiently, but we are also uh, recognizing those employees who are making, you, you know, who are proving to be the, uh, of course, the leaders are also the employees to the organization. They may be the employees to the organization, but then we may put in some deliberate effort to recognize and acknowledge the performance of those people who are the leaders. Then we have something called as longevity award which is gaining momentum these days. It is about acknowledging and celebrating employees who have been with the organization for a significant, significant period of time. So, I think you must be aware of the fact that many of the organizations are facing issues related to retention. So, the attrition rate of the organization is going up. So, it is important to take a note of such kind of situation if it happens and to correct it in the best possible manner. So, organizations if I able to retain their employees for long, it is a very, very big achievement for the organization as well as for the employees also. So, they need to be given some kind of uh, incentives for being with the organization for long as well. So, we have something called as longevity award which may be given to the employees. This is called as longevity award to acknowledge and celebrate the employees who have been with the organization for a significant period of time. A lot of emphasis is even placed on wellness programs these days. So, wellness programs also help organizations uh, to prioritize the uh, health concerns of their organizations and can really uh, be a wise way to foster a positive employee relationships. So, you need to get into some kind of bond with your employees and these are some of the ways by means of which we can actually create and foster a culture of recognition in the organization. So, we have dealt with a lot of examples pertaining to uh, how you know we can cultivate a positive employee, employee relation in the organization. Now, uh, the three topics which we have discussed so far or the three uh, components elements of positive employee relations that we have discussed so far. We will be talking about some of the uh, caselets specifically related to uh, them and then uh, we will highlight a few aspects related to 
these cases. Now, uh, when we talk about the first caselet, the ca first caselet pertains to the first element of positive employee relationship. So, I think by means of these cases, you will be able to uh, develop a better connect with the organization and its settings. So, this caselet one is about communication. Imagine a project team where members work remotely from different locations, which has become quite common these days. They are working remotely from different locations. While there are regular virtual meetings, one team member Anika feels out of the loop and believes that important decisions are being made without their input. So, this has led to decrease in Anika's motivation and contribution to the project. Uh, so, this is a very, very important concern and we need to look at it in a very important way. So, my questions to you all in this context would be, how would you address Anika's feeling of being out of the loop? How are you going to address this particular situation? Then second question is related to what communication strategies could be used by the organization to ensure that all members feel included and also informed. And the next point of discussion here can be how might the leader facilitate effective communication? How to ensure effective communication in virtual settings. I believe all of you understand that in virtual setting it is very important to facilitate smoother communication and effective communication also, but at the same time it is very challenging also because people are working from their remote locations and uh, they are working at their own paces. Uh, nobody is there to oversee them at that particular point of time. So, we, we want a very robust mechanism for effective communication to happen within the organization. So, how do you address the Anika's feelings and how do you make sure that people feel included and connected in such kind of situations and how do you believe you know effective communication can really help you in virtual settings. So, these are some of the very important areas of concern and they need to be addressed very well. So, I think from the discussion which we have had regarding communication and from the discussions which we have had regarding some of the important aspects related to how open communication can be fostered, you know you can pick a lot of cues and maybe one or two or a blend of some of the communication strategies may be used in this context to further face the challenges and help the organization grow. So, this is about communication and I think this kind of problem is quite common in many of the organizations which are facing the difficulties related to keeping people at work especially in remote settings. So, it becomes a big challenge in this connection some kind of town hall meetings can be planned or maybe some kind of uh, regular interactions can be fostered and to keep people at work maybe once in a while they may be called at a certain setting and uh, such kind of culture can be cultivated that people open up, they speak up, maybe one to one communication becomes very important in this context, right. So, all these things can really help in smoothening the process. So, I would want you people to think about it and understand how are you going to address, address such kind of situation and how would you answer these three questions of importance. Now, the second caselet which I have brought here relates to the element of recognition in fostering a culture of positive employee relationships in the organization. Now, uh, this is a situation, this is a case in which in a department meeting, the manager publicly acknowledges and praises one team member, Sara for her exceptional contribution to a recent project. So, she did exceptionally well for one of the projects that she was into and she was publicly acknowledged and 
received a lo lot of accolades for uh, the work she delivered. However, the other team members feel that their efforts are not being recognized, leading to a sense of demotivation and frustration among them. So, this is again a very, very common situation wherein out of hundreds, hundreds of people, a handful of people are recognized. So, it is quite common that these sets of people who are not recognized for the performance that they are delivering or uh, they feel undervalued or they do not feel that they are being motivated enough. At the same time, it is very important for us to recognize the, uh, you know, the, the contribution of the employee who is putting in his or her heart and soul towards the organizational goal fulfillment. Now, the question here is, how would you address the feelings of team members? How would you address the feelings of team members who feel unrecognized? It might be the case that their, uh, uh, their efforts were actually not recognized and we failed to take into consideration certain such aspects which were again of very, very high importance. So, we need to address these feelings in a very effective manner, otherwise uh, those people will also lead to, I mean those people may develop a feeling of demotivation and they may develop a feeling of, uh, you know, um, some kind of anger or frustration and this can further decline the overall productivity of the organization. So, it is important to address the uh, value and contribution which were made by Sara, but at the same time it is very important to address the feelings of team members in the organization. Then second question in this context is, what strategies could be used by the manager to ensure that recognition is distributed more equally? What strategies can be put in place to ensure that the recognition is is distributed equally among people? And how are you going to uh, foster a culture of mutual recognition and appreciation? So, these are some of the questions of deep concern and we need to address these questions very importantly. And uh, certainly, if these questions are addressed, then only we will be able to make it. So, I think in this regard, you need to brainstorm a lot and you need to figure out what can be the various ways of ensuring that the team members feelings are recognized duly and the recognition is also distributed equally among members and how to create a culture of mutual recognition and appreciation within the organizations. So, such kind of things are important in context of recognition and uh, there is a dire need to address these things very wisely, otherwise it can have several repercussions. So, this was about uh, recognition and uh, maybe some kind of uh, methods may be put in place by the organizations to address these things. What are those methods? You need to address them and you need to figure out uh, several methods from whatever we have discussed so far and of course, you can take up some of the policies, strategies which have been taken up by the other organizations also to address such kind of issues. And uh, I will give you a hint in this context, you may use some kind of quantitative techniques also to address such kind of issues. Then is about the third case slate is about feedback. Now, there is this team which has recently undergone a major change in the processes and there is some kind of uncertainty about new ways of working. Now, some team members are hesitant to embrace the changes and the productivity has seen a dip which usually happens in most of the settings. When some kind of change is introduced in the organization, there is a likelihood of some kind of reluctance and some kind of resistance to change. It is very human to have such kind of reluctance to change or to witness such kind of reluctance to change and re resistance to change as well. So, some team members in the organization are hesitant to embrace the changes, rest of them are not and uh, the productivity also has a seen a dip because of the change that has been introduced. Though the change which was uh, introduced was for good of the organization and certain uh, changes uh, which were brought in terms of the processes 
but uh, it has suddenly shown some kind of dip in the productivity. So, the team leader wants to produ provide constructive feedback to address concerns and improve performance. So, in this context again there are few questions which are to be addressed. Number one, how would you approach providing feedback to team members? How would you approach providing feedback to the team members who are struggling with the changes? What methods can be put in place for gathering the feedback from team members about their concerns? And then in what way can feedback be constructive? And how can it contribute to a team's adaptation to certain changes? So, these are the questions that need to be addressed. What kind of mechanism should be used by the organizations to uh, create this culture of uh, providing feedback, uh, especially to the team members who are struggling with the changes? Maybe because of the reason that they do not want to adopt the changes or adapt to the changes, or maybe because of the reason that they do not know how to address the changes, or uh, may, you know, there can be several reasons why they may be a little uh, hesitant to. Uh, uh, you know embrace the changes, but then we need to first of all outline the reasons why they are quite hesitant to uh, embrace the changes and then we need to figure out the ways by means of which uh, you know providing feedback to team members, uh, we, we must try to figure out some of the ways by means of which we can provide the constructive feedback to the team members. And also it is important for us to understand why is such kind of reluctance happening, why is such, such kind of resistance happening to change. And then we need to address the changes by our own manner and feedback can be uh, a wonderful way, way to address such kind of changes. But how to provide the constructive feedback to the people and how to make people actually adopt the change, adapt to the change is again a very, very serious challenge for the organization. So, this was about uh, the various uh, cases or the caselets for keeping the people at work, for ensuring the employee engagement at work and to foster a culture of positive employee relations. Next, we move to the strategies for enhancing employee engagement. Now, I think by now you have a fair understanding of uh, how positive employee relations can really impact the organizations in a positive way. And now it is time to explore the engine that propels the organization's success. And I think employee engagement is the key. So, engaged employees are not just contributing to the organization, but then they are also the advocates to the organization. They are also the ones who are responsible for driving the innovations in the organization and they are also responsible for dedicating their best to the organization. Because if innovation is at the heart of any organization, it is the people who bring about those innovations and people need to be taken care of. And in this context, I would definitely like to highlight that these days the organizations are considering the employees as the internal customers. So, by internal customers we mean that they are actually being valued as the internal customers to the organization, which means that they are being taken care of like customers, because it is believed that if they are treated well in the same manner as we you know treat our external customers. So, if we treat them well then it will lead to further providing deeper sense of satisfaction and further satisfying the external customers also. So, internal customer management is actually the key for it is a gateway for external customer management. In the same manner as in which the organizations cannot think of faltering or do not feel like even leaving any stone unturned for ensuring Uh, the best of the customer delight to its customers, to its external customer. 
and ensuring some kind of employee, uh, sorry, customer experience for them. In the same manner, the organizations are thinking on the lines of ensuring the internal customer management. They are very particular about the fact these days, they really, all the wise organizations, they are thinking on the lines of keeping the employees satisfied, delighted and for keeping them delighted and for managing them well, it is important for us, one of the key is, key towards success of the organization is to ensure that the right kind of strategies are put in place for enhancing the employee engagement. Now what it is all about, now let us dive into some kind of tangible strategies for enhancing the employee engagement. Uh, we are going to discuss some of the strategies here and uh, particularly related to all those things that we have discussed so far and some more things as well. So, when it comes to clear communication, I think we have talked a lot about communication in the organization, the essence of uh, communication in the organization and we already talked about establishing open lines of communications at all levels, blurring the boundaries between uh, the people who are sitting at the top and the uh, bottom level of management, then regularly sharing the company's updates, goals, vision, mission, strategic intent to the people, conducting the uh, regular meetings from time to time. Uh, conducting the town hall meetings for the people, fostering a culture of open communication within the organization and then um, you know sharing all kinds of updates with the people, asking them to come up with the challenges if any they are facing, then ensuring that employees understand how their work contributes to the broader organizational objective. Now conducting regular town hall meetings using internal communication platforms, organizations even have their internal communication platform which facilitates smoother communication process within the organization, right. So all these things encouraging the people to, you know, to meet from time to time and uh, encouraging them to come up with the, um, encouraging them to come from, uh, to meet each other from time to time is again a very important aspect that needs to be seen. Then after that we have uh, recognition and appreciation. So when it comes to recognition and appreciation, it is employed to recognize uh, the people for the efforts being put by them, appreciate them to time, from time to time, uh, which can be both formally and informally and giving them their due share of credit, including public appreciation, awards, personalized thank you notes, etc. Uh, these days organizations are even thinking on the lines of providing a very uh, concrete kind of feedback to the people and they call it as sandwich feedback. So what is the sandwich feedback? Sandwich feedback is a kind of feedback in which you do not just bluntly give the feedback to the individuals regarding the area of their discrepancies. Rather the idea is to praise the people first, then maybe if you have some element of criticism, you criticize them on certain issues, not just criticism but then yes, uh, you need to put some negative points if you have any or maybe if you want to tell them or highlight some grey areas or areas of discrepancies. So all these things need to be catered to and after that again we need to praise the people at work. So all these things will essentially contribute towards organizations, uh, you know organization success because uh, this kind of culture of recognition and appreciation keep people at work. They feel engaged and they feel more connected to the workforce and they feel that they are an important stakeholder to the organization as well. Now uh, next is professional development opportunities. See we are dealing with multiple kinds of uh, workforce. Uh, we have generation Y people working in the organization, generation X people working in the organization, generation Z people have also started taking over and they have also started working in the organizations. And I think it is very important for us to understand that the need drive pattern of various sets of people vary. Uh, we have multi-generational force, workforce in the organizations and the need pattern, the need drive pattern of people vary. Their expectations from the organizations also vary, their career attitude varies and also there is a lot of, you know, there are, there is a lot of difference in the way they perceive things the kind of psychological contract which they get into with the organization also varies. In organizations, employees are more demanding than ever, you know, and maybe in the time to come when uh, the new generation would take over, the alpha generation would take over, they would be even more demanding than this generation. So it is important for us to take care of their needs.
one of the dire need which people feel today and in fact they want it to be given to them as a right is professional development opportunities. So, we need to provide them with adequate professional development opportunities. We need to understand that people today are not just interested in following the career path set for them by some other person. They want to develop their own career paths. They want to take the strategic control of their own career. They want to carve their own niche and they really want to be self-driven in nature. They want to be value-driven in nature. So, professional development opportunities would definitely help in this regard. So, we need to provide them avenues for skill development and career growth and employees are more engaged when they see opportunities for learning and advancement. So, organization, it becomes a responsibility of the organization to provide them with adequate opportunities to showcase their talent and also providing them adequate opportunities to foster a culture of learning and development. So, we may offer, the organizations may have offer some kind of training programs to them, some kind of certification uh, courses to them, so that they are able to develop themselves. Then we may, they may even uh, encourage them to go for MDPs, that is management development programs. The organizations may mm, have some kind of, may uh, conduct some kind of career development workshops for them, wherein uh, they may get to know about their career paths, you know. There may be some kind of workshops designed particularly to make them understand uh, uh, what can be the best possible thing in their uh, careers, how can they groom themselves professionally and how can they develop themselves professionally. So, all these things are again a very important phenom phenomena to take care of and after that we have work life balance. See organizations and the employees have to take care of each other. It is important for the organizations to understand that the culture is not toxic and people really feel like coming to the organization and they have to value the personal life of the individuals as well. So, they need to strike a balance, they need to provide them with such kind of opportunity which help them strike a balance between their professional commitments and their personal commitments. So, work-life balance is something which is of paramount importance here and the organizations have to take care of their work-life balance. As a part of it, maybe uh, to promote work-life balance, some kind of flexi time arrangements can be made for the people. For female employees especially, you know, some kind of uh, flexibility may be given to them. Then recognizing the importance of uh, personal lives of people and promoting uh, remote working options if any encouraging the employees to take breaks in between, you know, sending them for vacations every now and then and, uh, you know, encouraging them to spend some quality uh, time with their family as well. So, because, you know, if you are going to have such kind of practices in place, the people feel lighter and they feel more connected with the organization. They feel like being with the organization for long. And it is often seen that if the organization provides them with op ample opportunities to strike work-life balance, it certainly leads to uh, their, you know, their professional success as well as their personal success. And the organization is also benefited. Gone are those days when people used to think that when the employee is coming to the organization, he needs to be exploited to the fullest. We need to actually as understand the value of and we need to understand the essence of human resources that are working in the organization, providing them with adequate opportunities to uh, develop themselves, holistically grooming them and also providing them with adequate work-life balance would actually help them feel more connected, more, you know, more, uh, more towards the organization. So, commitment can also be increased by means of it. Then we have uh, something called as employee involvement in decision making. So, these days the organizations are really interested in giving some kind of power to the employees and giving good power to the employees for decision making. Some sense of autonomy is also important for the organizations. So, employee involvement in decision making is yet another thing, which means involving the employees in decision making processes. When employees feel their opinions matter, they are lo more likely to be engaged. So, there is a clear line of association between encouraging the people to 
involved in decision making, giving them some kind of industrial democracy at work and their sense of achievement, sorry and their sense of uh, commitment within the organization and their employee engagement level. So, fostering such kind of culture can really help the organization in multiple ways. This will not only create a positive work environment for the organization, but also it will help in increasing the commitment of people at work. They will start exhibiting more of uh, you know like for example, I will give you some examples in this context. Uh, there are organizations which are valuing something called as intrapreneurship. Now, what is this intrapreneurship? You must have heard about entrepreneurship, but then there is a new phenomena coming called as intrapreneurship. So, the organizations are realizing that many of the people are uh, really interested in moonlighting. They want to have their own ventures, they want to go out, they understand that you know career at, you know the career attitude of people is also changing. So, they understand the inner or innate uh, need of people to uh, get into some, some kind of venture of theirs, right. So, in order to foster a culture, in order to actually uh, refrain the people to think about those things, uh, it is not about refraining the people actually. Uh, in order to ensure, hmm. so many of the organizations are of the view that intrapreneurial opportunity must be given to the employees. So, intrapreneurial opportunities are a must for the employees. We need to provide them with adequate opportunities. The organizations are thinking on the lines of giving them uh, with the opportunity to start up some kind of venture by using the resources of the organization. Like uh, many organizations are giving them ample time to work on their own projects also within the organization by giving them, by extending them with all kind of infrastructural support so that they can develop themselves, they can come up with intrapreneurial ventures of their own. So, certainly if such kind of flexibility is given to the employees, why will people not feel engaged? They would be more engaged towards the organization. And then uh, it is about positive environment creating and contributing significantly to employee engagement. For example, we may have more of team building exercises, people may be taken on excursions, they may be promote you know they may be uh, asked to uh, be a part of some kind of uh, uh, activities you know out of the box, box activities within the organization and promote a culture of respect and inclusivity. Next is leadership development. Now, what does leadership development mean? Leadership development is about developing the leaders and it is about those programs which intend to develop the leadership skills among the individuals. And investing in such kind of programs can often attribute to their satisfaction level and it effectively turns out to be uh, giving us multiple kinds of benefit in benefits in terms of effective leadership. Uh, so, providing them with the adequate training programs, mentorship opportunities you know and ensuring that leaders exemplify the uh, organizational values also one of the major concerns. Now, uh, as I have been stressing on this point that organizations should be working on and should be prioritizing the employee well being. So, healthy employees are more likely to be engaged and uh, they are likely to be more productive than others. So, wellness programs is something which can really help the organizations and uh, to keep people at work and to make them feel more engaged. Regular performance feedback needs to be given to the individual, so that they keep getting some kind of constructive feedback, some kind of sandwich feedback may be given to the employees, you know they may be, uh, they may be asked to come forward and come up with some kind of uh, constructive feedback etcetera. And then we have encouraging or fostering social connection among the employees. So, by developing such kind of bond among the individuals a sense of community comes and this sense of community again leads to enhanced satisfaction and engagement level. Now, uh, we are going to touch upon some of the important aspects of managing conflicts at workplace. So, these are few of the strategies which can be used in this context and they are different uh, you know ways by means of which we can uh, manage the conflicts which happen in the organization. So, conflict resolution is an important thing and uh, 
before this i would just like to give you a glimpse of uh, you know what conflicts are so what grievances are so employee conflicts they are natural part of dynamic team we can picture a scenario where different personalities and perspectives you know collide and if managed well conflicts can really lead to innovation and growth so there are different viewpoints and context of conflicts these days it is often believed that you know con con conflicts can even be constructive also so there can be several strategies which can be followed for fostering a culture of accommodating the conflicts in the organizations and managing the conflicts of the organization so we may have early intervention we may have active listening collaborative problem solving establishing conflict resolution protocols mediation by the third party training and education clear communication negotiation skills promoting a positive work environment conflict coaching and uh, maybe establishing a feedback culture cultural competence so all these things will help us in managing the conflict at the workplace now i'm going to take you through some of the important strategies which have been uh, developed in this context and uh, these strategy you know these strategies can be of utmost importance for the organizations uh, for ensuring that the conflicts are really managed well so we're going to talk about five active strategies in this context and uh, these strategies can really prove to be very very counterproductive for the uh, sorry these ye wala kaatna padega so these these ye wala thoda sa portion kaatna padega theek hai thoda sa badhega ye 5 10 minute theek hai so basically uh, these strategies can really prove to be very effective for the organization organizations uh, health and they can really prove to be very productive not counterproductive they can really prove to be very productive for the organization and uh, various strategies that can be used for ensuring the uh, strong management of conflict at the workplace can be avoiding the conflicts one way is to avoid the conflicts another way is to compete with the conflicts and then we have another strategy called as accommodating wherein we accommodate the conflicts when they happen and then another uh, idea is to the fourth strategy relates to uh, collaborations and uh, creating a very collaborative kind of work environment so that uh, the employees are working their level best and they are collaborating instead of just uh, getting into strong negotiations and not uh, winning it so instead of competing collaboration can be one of the best strategy another strategy in this context could be managing the conflicts uh, in the organization by compromising on certain thing so these were few of the strategies uh, for managing the conflicts in workplace so let me tell you kenneth thomas and ralph kilman uh, were the ones who developed this five conflict resolution strategies that people use for handling the conflicts and uh, these were the five dimensions and i hope you have been able to understand the essence of positive engagement of people positive relations within the organizations the dynamics related to handling the conflicts within the organization as well thank you so much